Well, thanks very much, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I want to talk about energy productivity, and I'm uh, aware of a couple of things. Uh, one is that there are a lot of people in the audience, of course, who have uh, uh, done a lot of research, practice, and uh, policy making in this area. So, uh, to you, you have my gratitude, and also my apologies uh, for uh, how I might represent that work. Energy productivity is not just desirable, but an absolutely essential part of this energy revolution picture that we just heard Kane talking about, and I'd like to make the case that it's absolutely essential that we integrate the renewables piece with the energy productivity piece, and I'll, I'll go through why that's important. The question is, are we stuck with this energy trilemma that Kane mentioned? Uh, I mean, certainly by the uh, commentary that we hear uh, in the media, you would, you would hear that this is a trade-off, and it's a bit like a whack-a-mole game, and push one down and one pops up and so on. My argument would be that, in fact, it's possible to actually solve this and move towards the energy trifecta. So decreasing emissions, we just heard that renewables are now moving into the uh, league table in such a way as that they have uh, reduced cost relative to fossil fuel uh, power stations. Energy efficiency is the quickest, the cheapest and the largest source of new energy that we can find. And that's an important part of this energy trifecta picture. Demand response, peak demand management, distributed generation, uh, and yes, batteries play an important role in that, but demand response, uh, good old fashioned demand response, and it's fantastic to see uh, ARENA involved in that, uh, that process of looking for opportunities in this area, is one of the cheapest and best ways that we can immediately improve reliability. And the combination of those two mean that we can actually solve the affordability question uh, particularly given the synergy between the two. So I want to ha just have a look at this uh, to explain the importance of the fifth fuel of energy efficiency, demand side response in improving energy productivity. So we can see over the last two decades, since the last recession, that if we had frozen energy productivity, we would have, uh, we've had GDP growth of 108%, but in that process, we've only increased uh, energy by 46 or so percent. So we've already started to break that nexus between energy consumption and GDP that's been the stock in trade for the way we think about energy uh, for, for so many decades. And what's interesting about this as well is that coal has contributed a significantly small proportion uh, of that 46% growth in energy consumption. Uh, only 5% contribution from coal, but an increased percentage from oil and gas. And of course, there's a problem there. The first is that gas is now becoming more expensive, and we're starting to see the pain associated with that. And the second is that we're increasing the share of oil, and we haven't been paying attention to that. And of course, there are security implications. Fine, while oil's cheap at the moment, uh, but of course, once the pressure comes on, uh, this becomes a security issue as much as an affordability issue. So we've broken that nexus, and we've already made huge gains in energy productivity, but we could do so much more. Indeed, it's the lowest cost option, and Kane showed this, uh, this work from the excellent uh, review by the chief scientist, but if we add in energy efficiency based on estimates, everywhere we look, when we do the studies, when we go into buildings, when we go into factories, even when we go into houses, we see the potential and the low cost of investment in energy use improvements, averaging out at around $50 per megawatt hour, lower in many cases. And obviously, if you combine this with demand side response, then you've got some powerful synergy as well. So it is indeed the lowest cost option that we can provide, uh, and we need to be tapping into that. And We've got a lot of experience with this. When, when our current targets, the current Commonwealth Government targets, are for a 40% uh, improvement in energy productivity. Uh, the Australian Alliance for Energy Productivity, which uh, I'm involved with, uh, is uh, pushing for a doubling of energy productivity. But we have historical precedent for much greater improvements in energy productivity across a range of different end uses and sectors. Just take lighting. Who would have anticipated that we would have had such multiple, indeed, looking towards tenfold improvements if you take from incandescent through to LEDs, which are shooting for much larger scale improvements. But you can multiply this across a lot of different sectors. And if I can just have a personal anecdote for a moment, on Wednesday, installers are coming. I actually, uh, for, for uh, 
I've managed to avoid eating a lot of mashed avocado, so I've managed to afford a house. Uh, so on Wednesday, people are, installers are coming to put in a heat pump to replace a, a 4.8 kilowatt electric resistance uh, hot water system with a uh, one kilowatt COP of 4.5 uh, heat pump, and then the following week, uh, 4.5 kilowatts of PV on the roof. So that's an example of the huge change that we've seen. And in, if we look across every sector in HVAC, in heat pumps, uh, industrial processes, appliances, fixtures, television sets, and so on, then we see this same uh, huge story. So we would argue that doubling energy productivity is the minimum that we should be aiming for uh, in terms of the future. So indeed, doubling energy productivity by 2030, uh, as I said, is, is a, a quite reasonable, quite achievable goal. Huge benefits associated with that. Obviously, there's energy saving benefits. And recent work by ASBEC and our colleagues at Climateworks Australia, $20 billion saving just in the building sector alone, which is only, of course, part of the equation. Our work shows that there's $15 billion savings in avoided network costs uh, if we actually look at the system as a whole and thankfully the public policy discussion is now including the uh, transmission and distribution networks uh, into the equation. But it's not just that. It's not just the value of the energy savings. There are a whole lot of associated multiple benefits. Indeed, the reductions in material use, material flows and water flows are worth, in some cases, three times more than the energy savings themselves. So we also need to be looking at the, uh, the multiple picture. And then when you look at the, uh, the savings associated with improving systems, and this is where the energy productivity uh, debate differs from energy efficiency, uh, so some recent work that the A2 Australian Alliance for Energy Productivity has done looking at the food value chain shows that the value associated with improving the cold chain, ensuring that food stays at the right temperature through the whole cold chain, uh, is actually worth more than the energy, uh, the energy and other material savings combined because of the improvement in security and the reduction in food waste, which of course is a, a current strong uh, Commonwealth Government priority. So there are a huge set of benefits associated with this. And finally, one of the other benefits that was shown by the low emissions technology roadmap that CSIRO recently completed, and I commend that report to you, is associated with the uh, integration of renewables. The fact that we're able to uh, increase energy productivity in the short term is one of the ways that we will be able to meet our targets in terms of renewables. It's one of the key strategies for that, uh, for that outcome. Uh, and indeed, the electrification that's associated with energy productivity, electric vehicles, as I said, heat pumps replacing gas, and of course, the gas price increase can here be looked at a challenge or an opportunity. If we start to replace gas, then the electrification combined with the energy productivity improvement mean that we're in a much quicker, and indeed that report showed, a much cheaper path to implementing renewables policy. And Australia, uh, in this case, if this was an Olympic sport, uh, we'd be deciding to spend an enormous amount of money on it because we're 27th out of 34 OECD countries. China, over the last two decades, has been increasing at twice the rate of Australia in terms of energy productivity, uh, so we need to act now, be left behind. And so the question is, well, if it's so good, why isn't it happening? Well, there are a range of barriers. A lot of our work uh, looks at these barriers and determines the fact that it's, there are good uh, policies, good processes that need to be implemented in order to encourage energy efficiency, to encourage demand-side response. And we're starting to see some really good movement on that uh, with changes to the electricity laws. So we've been looking at that in relation to demand management and particularly energy efficiency. And so you can see there's an important role for research development and demonstration as well. So it's really uh, uh, fantastic that uh, ARENA have commissioned uh, some work and we're working with Climate Works and Energy Australian Alliance for Energy Productivity to look at how we can improve and support research development and demonstration in energy productivity uh, as an important part of this equation. So in conclusion, what needs to be done? The first one is to remove these institutional barriers to energy productivity. Uh, in many cases, uh, there are lots of $20 bills lying on the pavement that aren't being picked up. All of the practitioners know that, uh, and we need to 
undertake the appropriate research and, under, and put in place the appropriate programs, and there's a very important role for government in correcting market failure uh, in order to remove those barriers, in order to uh, enable us to achieve at least a doubling of energy productivity, obviously supporting our D&D, and that's why it's such a uh, fantastic that ARENA will be uh, being involved with this, uh, an investment in energy productivity and particularly the integration with renewables. We need to have the energy efficiency piece, the demand response piece and the renewables piece because together uh, the whole will indeed be greater than the sum of the parts. Thanks very much.